making big progress. Um, I'd be limited in OTAs, um, training camp, I'd be full go. But if, it, if it's my decision, I think I can go now. Yeah. <laughs> there were some reports that you would need an additional surgery. Is that not accurate? Uh, that's not accurate at all. Um, I'm, I'm fine. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on schedule. Solomon's coming in, into the building. Uh, you've been here. You've been here before as a player, correct? Yes, sir. So we played in the Pac-12 championship here, and also in the Foster Farmers Bowl when uh, I was a freshman at Stanford. So we've been here a couple times, and it's an amazing building. Happy to be back here. And what's it like to, to walk in here now as an employee? Well, it feels great. You know, it's an honor to be here as an employee, as a 49er. Um, I'm ready to go to work with these guys and have a great time. Both of you guys expect to start, come in, make a big impact? You know, coming in, you have to earn your stripes. I can't come in here and say I'm just going to start right away. I have to work with the guys, get to know my teammates, become a great teammate, become a great practice player, and just earn my stripes as I go on and just keep working and working until I can say I can get there. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think about starting. I'm, I'm coming in humble, um, coming in to um, pick some brains, so, you know, just get to know the coaches and, and the players and, and just – Really just be humble and just love one another and just let them carry me and show me the way, show me the ropes. You guys had a chance to meet your, your new teammates who are in the locker room, anything like that? You know, I met a couple of guys coming in here so far, and they has been really friendly, opening me in, welcoming me in, and uh, got to see Eric Reed. I played with his brother at, at uh, Stanford, so it was a familiar, familiar face. I saw Josh Garnett used to play with him at Stanford, so, you know, I already feel welcome on the team. and. It was great. Uh, how, how would you characterize? Oh, sorry. Oh, I just um, got finished on um, being on Vincent Sincere, but um, far as the linebacker group, I, I, I didn't get a chance to meet none of them, but I look forward to meeting them. How would you uh, characterize the time you got to spend with John Lynch during the pre-draft process? Oh man, it's good, man. You know, it's it's fun. It's it's funny, fun, home welcoming. You know, it's like a real real home, like love, like family. You guys ever met before today? No, we haven't met before, but I spent about 10 minutes with him, and I already feel like he's my brother. Yeah. So. <laughs> he's right. He's right about that. <laughs> Ruben, I'll ask you, I know the 49ers sent a couple people down to visit you, spent some time, get to know you. In that visit, what did you learn about the 49ers and, and them as an organization? It's all about love and trust, man. And um, and they, and they what what I learned about them is... is it's love, and I, I, love, I love the 49ers. I grew up loving the 49ers from Patrick Willis, you know, all the greats. And I want to become, I want to, I want to come in here and become one of the greats. I know I got to wait my turn and do a step at a time, but I'm willing to do that, and I'm going to do that. Ruben, when, when uh, John Lynch called you yesterday, you, uh, according to John, told him <laughs> you were going to the Saints. Uh, uh, what, did the Saints, have the Saints called you and told you that we're picking you at 32? They they actually did man. It was a funny that's that's a funny story man. Like, y'all like it was a funny story. Tell the story please. <laughs> All right, so um, the thirty the thirty um uh, two pick was about to come up, so I get a call from um New Orleans Saints, and they say you are you are you in Louisiana Ben Rouge? I was like no sir I'm in Miami on um, Florida. Is your woman around? I'm like, hold on, why you want to speak to my woman? <laughs> so I said, give her the phone. I gave her the phone. All I hear is, yeah, no, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, we in Miami, yes, sir. I'm like, dang, what are they talking about? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's when um, a click had came in. She she pulled the phone out like this. I said, oh, this is San Jose. So I had clicked over. <laughs> I had clicked over for um, for the San Francisco 49ers, and I picked. And I said, hello. Why the New Orleans Saints still on the line? <laughs> and I'm like, dang. But I wanted to be a 49 so bad. It, it was a funny, but man, it was crazy. Wait, so did, the Saints, did the Saints tell you that they had picked you? They wanted to pick me, but they, it was too late. They, they were the 31st pick. They traded down. So they couldn't. It was like, I, I told John Lynch, Coach John Lynch, that it was too late. I said, man, Coach, you the 34th pick. You, it's too late. The New Orleans Saints about to get me. <laughs> what did the Saints say to your? Girlfriend or who, who's on the other? They were just like, <laughs> my girl was on the phone with the New Orleans Saints. What did they tell her? You got to take your time and just really scope him and be there for him. Because, you know, she from Louisiana, Ben Rouge, New Orleans, just a four to five minute drive. So she, she, they wanted her there with her family and be like a home welcoming, like 
home away from home. They were certain they were picking you. Is that what you're saying? I, yeah, yeah, they were certain that we were going to pick Basically, me. But they were welcoming you, your girlfriend, to the family, essentially, when John called on the other line. Yeah. <laughs> so was it awkward at all when you clicked back on the other line? No, it, nah, I hung, hung up. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> they were moving up to take you. So what? What were you going through during that time? You know, I was just waiting patiently. You know, waiting for my phone to get called. Uh, if they're going to take me, they're going to take me. If not, I was going to. The next pick, and you know, love the 49ers, and it's a dream come true to be here, and it's an honor to be here, so I'm happy. Solomon, not a lot of players, draftees, uh, once took a class with their new general manager. <laughs> uh, how did that factor in in terms of your communication with John leading up to the draft? You know, it was already a comfortable relationship, you know, being with John before in the class and get to know him a little bit, see how he was in the classroom, and just a role, role model there, and get to talk to him a little bit throughout my college career, just get advice from him, and just as it goes on, how to become a better player, better man. And, you know, now I'm an employee under him, and I can't wait to learn under him and play for him. So I'm, I'm really excited. Ruben, you've had some challenges in your childhood and obviously overcome them. What, what's been the key for you in having success and being able to overcome those obstacles? Um, just playing the, um, the sport that I love. You know, this football is, is my is my passion. It's my it's in my domain. It's my stress relief. It's my home. So just playing the sport I love. Ruben, why was your draft party sponsored by a company that makes vaporizers for tobacco and marijuana? No, well, hey, there's a new leaf, and I'm not answering that. Um, I'm not answering that. I'm sorry. Next question. I'm sorry, y'all. Solid. Last year, uh, I know the NFL rules dictate that you can only do so much to your class graduate. Uh, you remember Joshua Garnett last year? Was, was he around Stanford uh, while you were there? Was he was waiting for that? Mm -hmm. What was that like? Yes, sir. So after Joshua got, got drafted, he was back at Stanford training with Coach Turley, and he he took classes for a little bit, but then uh, it got to to a point where he stopped taking classes. But um, yeah, he was just around working, so I was trying to get work with him when he was when he was back. But um, he was just in the area, stayed in the area because he's Santa Clara's about a twenty minute drive, fifteen minute drive. So um, he just stayed in the area, stayed close to his new home. So, so will you seek advice from him on how to handle to keep yourself from running up the walls during that time? <laughs> yeah, yes, sir, definitely. I'll, I'll be talking with Joshua and other guys on the team and talking with the coaches as much as I can to learn as much as I can when I'm not when I'm away from when I can't be at the facility. So I'm going to do whatever I can to just continue to learn and get better while I'm away, but still kind of try to my best to be here in some way. How much of the offseason program are you going to miss? <laughs> Um, so I can come back to rookie minicamp, and then um, I can't come back until sometime, I think, early June, because uh, that's when we don't start, uh, when classes end. Or, yes, sir. A couple more? What have you each been told about what your role will be, uh, you know, fitting in with the defense and implement a new one here? Well, um, he, he said it best. You got to come in and earn it, uh, which we, we, do. we look forward to doing it. You definitely got to come in, and, and like I said, you got to earn your stripes and get respect to your team, become a teammate, learn from everyone. But uh, I'm definitely excited to be part of this defense. It's a great defense. Uh, amazing players all around, from Navarro Bowman to DeForest Buckner, Eric Reed. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, and getting to play with someone like Ruben, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. You know, watch this highlight tape before, and he can hit. So <laughs> I can't wait to see him hit someone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So now you're going to be paired next to Navarro Bowman. What, what do you know about him? Or what, do you, what did you like about his game when, when you were watching him play? Navarro Bowman? Yeah. I, I, I don't know too much about him, but I look forward to just getting to know him and just picking his brain because he's a vet, and I really, I really want to just know the ropes from him, from his standpoint, because he's been in this um, game more than I have. And um, Patrick Willis' standpoint, man, he's a great player. I want to become more like him because, you know, he, let, he, let, he left a um, great legacy up here. So if I'm trying to get in that, on that role, I want to leave a great legacy too, you know. Have you ever met Patrick? I never met Patrick, but hey, I, I know how he play. <laughs> Solomon, the, uh, you, with your long relationship with, with John Lynch, before he got into the league, do you know if he was calling teams 
uh, you know, on your behalf to keep an eye out for you uh, on the Stanford football field? You know, um, I, I don't know. I was just talking to Mr. Lynch and just trying to get a feel for how I should prepare throughout the process because I know he went through the process leading as a junior. So just asking him questions like uh, how should I look um, as myself towards the next level and um, what's my mindset towards the rest of the season. And, you know, he just told me, you know, during this bowl game, you just got to get a ball out and have the best game of your life. And I try to do that. And uh, I almost, I'm almost pretty sure I had one of the best games of my life that game. So I just try to listen to his advice. Ruben, you clearly have NFL talent, but given some of the challenges you faced, do you think you've beaten the odds in order to be in the NFL? Uh, I don't look back at that. You know, this is this since they picked me on the third first pick. There's a new leaf. There's a new journey for me. So I'm just looking forward and just become becoming great. Boy, man. You know. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you.